Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Some breaking news coming out of the Oklahoma Sooners program as Brent Venables has decided to part ways with defensive coordinator Ted Roof. And you take a look at where Oklahoma might be going in the direction to find their new defensive coordinator. A lot of buzz on the message boards and on Twitter is it's going to be an in-house in-house hire, just like you saw with the Oklahoma offensive coordinator position. And I look at this situation, I say, I wouldn't be too sure that this is going to be an in-house hire because you look at the offensive side of the football and the offensive coordinator hire that they needed to make, there were a lot of good things being done within that offense. And you look at that Oklahoma offense last year, top five in points per game, top 10 in yards per play. This Oklahoma offense was moving in the right direction, but you look at the defense and although that Oklahoma defense has made significant improvements from what you saw in 2022 to 2023 i think a lot of oklahoma fans look at that defense look at the talent that they have and say there was probably some meat left on the bone in terms of what this defense could have looked like and that's not to say that going out and hiring top todd, todd bates and, and elevating him wouldn't be a bad decision or whatever combination of in-house hire you might see but i also could see brent venables looking outside of this program to get a new mind coming in to run and, and help run, I should say, this defense with obviously Brent Venables having a heavy hand in what this defense looks like. I want to talk about a few candidates that I think would be really good fits for the Oklahoma Sooners. Really excited to get into this one. Before we do, just want to say thank you to you guys. This has been a, a very exciting last couple of weeks. We've talked a ton of Oklahoma Sooners in the transfer portal on the high school recruiting trail. The amount of support you guys have shown the boys, it's been amazing. If you guys do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. And more importantly, would love to hear how you guys would like to see Oklahoma handle this defensive coordinator hire. Because I think there are a lot of names, a lot of directions you could go. I have three names that have jumped out to me. And again, we'll continue to update this list as we kind of get the hot board and we kind of get a feel for where Oklahoma might want to go. Without further ado, let's get into this one. And I want to start with one of my favorite defensive coordinators in the entire country. And that's Scott Simons coming from SMU. And I want to preface this conversation with saying this has to be one of the more attractive jobs for a defensive coordinator to leave their program and come to Norman. Because one, you are learning from one of the best defensive minds that we've seen in college football over the last couple of decades and Brent Venables. And two, I mean, defensive performance has a lot to do with the talent that you have on defense, right? You take a look at the top defenses in the country, Georgia, Alabama. There's a reason the teams that recruit the best put out the best defenses. And so if you're a defensive coordinator in the way Oklahoma can recruit and it will recruit in the SEC, it's in a very attractive position in terms of you can come in and have an elite defense because you can recruit the talent to have an elite defense. Now, Scott Simons, extremely exciting. This is one of the, I think, true up and coming defensive coaches who's young, has a ton of energy, but also has put out phenomenal defenses the last couple of years at SMU. And you take a look at why Scott Simons would be kind of a perfect fit for what Brent Venables wants this defense to look like. It is ultra aggressive at SMU. And we talked about when Oklahoma's defense is dominating, like it did in the first half of that season, they were leading the country in tackles for loss. They they were consistently getting behind the line of scrimmage, forcing negative plays, forcing turnovers. That is the kind of defense Brent Venables wants to have in Norman. This is not some sort of Lincoln Riley, Alex Grinch defense where you want to bend. You don't want to, you might try to just hold him to three in the red zone. This is an aggressive defense. It wants to force negative plays. It wants to force turnovers. And Scott Simons, that's exactly what this SMU defense has looked over the last couple of years. And you look at what this SMU defense did in 2023, 19.2 points per game. That was 14th best in the country. Only allowed 4.5 yards per play, number seven in the country. Very good against the run, only 3.5 yards per carry, top 20 in the country. And the numbers that I have circled, top 15 in negative plays created, 9.6% sack rate. That was number five in the country. That SMU defense was known for getting after it, forcing turnovers in kind of playing an aggressive brand of defense, which is exactly what Brent Venables is trying to build in Norman. You see the emphasis on bringing in high quality, high caliber, high quality defensive line commitments. They want a very talented defensive line that can get after the quarterback and create those negative plays. 
that's the kind of defense that SMU had the last two years under Scott Simons. And I think further, the, the more exciting part about a guy like Scott Simons is he has a ton of energy. I think he's barely scratched the surface of what he can be as a defensive coordinator. And for him, you're looking at joining a Brent Venable staff, one of the better defensive minded coaches that we've seen in the last two decades that really makes sense. I think from an energy standpoint, these guys would gel immediately, but more importantly, I think this represents an opportunity for both programs or both, both Scott Simons, I should say, and this Oklahoma program. This one seems to make a lot of sense to me. Now, the next one I want to talk about, and this is a name that you continue to see thrown out in a lot of defensive coordinator search conversations. You look at USC and the defensive coordinator that they wanted. Jim Leonard kind of emerged as the top guy, and for whatever reason happened, Jim Leonard did not end up joining USC staff. Jim Leonard, during his time in Wisconsin, was one of the best defensive coordinators that you saw in the country. And obviously, with the coaching change that they made, Jim Leonard – out of a job, he joins as a senior analyst at uh, Illinois. And you look at Jim Leonard, it sounds like he's been extremely selective in terms of what staff and what program he wants to join. And so USC, for whatever reason, did not appeal to him. I think Oklahoma certainly would appeal to him. Because again, you go back to the conversation of Oklahoma checking boxes for young defensive coordinators to wind up. One, you can recruit elite talent. You're going to the SEC. And most importantly, you have Brent Venables running this program. You know it's going to be a defensive-oriented team that is prided on physicality, right? There are a lot of head coaches across the country that are offensive-minded teams. They want to go put up as many points as they can and kind of throw defense to the side. That's not what you're going to get in this Oklahoma program. So if you're Jim Leonard, there's a reason he hasn't taken jobs. And he's not a senior analyst at Illinois because he's nobody's offering him defense coordinator job. Can promise you that. So you look at Oklahoma, if they were to approach Jim Leonard, I wonder if this is the program that Jim Leonard would be interested in joining as the defensive coordinator. The last guy I want to talk about, and another defensive coordinator that I just, I have a ton of respect for, not only for the defense that he runs, but the brand of defense that they run. And that's Tony Gibson at NC State. One, a long track record of elite defenses at NC State. Joined Dave Dorn's staff in 2020, NC State's pretty consistently a top 25 defense in the country. So you see that sustained success, but more importantly, the brand of football of which Tony Gibson plays is special. And Dabo Sweeney saw this at Clemson. This was a this is an NC State defense that you look at the ACC defensive rankings. It was always Clemson at number one, and NC State was normally right behind Clemson. And NC State was able to do this, not recruiting nearly to the talent that Clemson was doing when Brent Venables was there. So you look at where Brent Venables might want to go. He's seen this Tony Gibson defense. I think he admires what Tony Gibson has done during his time at NC State. This one would make a lot of sense too. And at the end of the day, there are a ton of candidates, a ton of directions Oklahoma could go. And we'll continue to follow this one as the kind of candidates emerge and we get a clear idea of what candidates Brent Venables in this Oklahoma program are targeting. I wanted to list the three programs that I thought would make the most amount of sense. Let me know in the comment section where you guys would like to see Oklahoma go again. Appreciate you guys rocking with the boys. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel and we'll talk to y'all later. Peace.